Hey guys, what's up? John here from FlyMikeAlpha.com, coming to you live from the Cessna 140 and, oh hey look, a moose! What? Alright, so by the title of this video you're probably wondering, how does a moose make an airplane crash? And, well, it's actually a little more common than you think. It's basically, thinking back to your private pilot days when you were doing turns about a point, or when you're going for your commercial and you're doing eights on pylons, think about seeing a point on the ground and trying to turn quickly to it. Now, it's not just moose that are a problem, it's really anything on the ground that you are looking at and you get distracted at, especially flying low and slow, like it's so fun to do nowadays, right? Everyone loves flying low and slow, I like flying low and slow, but it can be a little problematic, because when you're low, you don't have much altitude, and when you're slow, you don't really have much energy, and so being low with low energy, you have very few options. Now, being in that low energy state, low to the ground, very few options to recover if something goes wrong, very few options to where you can put the airplane. Now, whether it's a coyote stall, or a moose stall, or an alligator stall in Florida, whatever it is that catches your attention, makes you look down, that could potentially cause a stall. And how that causes a stall is you see something, you see it off your left side, you're flying in the left seat typically, or your passenger sees something and you see it off the right, so you try to turn around it, right? So we're trying to turn and look for something. So we see a moose off the left-hand side here, we want to see it, right? So we go ahead and turn to the left. Now, I'm at cruise power, I see the moose passing behind me, so I go ahead and kick in a little bit of left right there, just a hair to swing it around, but now my wing's covering it up, so I use a little bit of right aileron, and I'm trying to pull back to try to make the turn tighter and see it, but before you know what's happening, the airplane's getting slow, and you're getting into, oh, that could be a stall, slash, and a spin. Now, you could easily get into an incipient spin there, and you're probably not going to be flying at 90 or 100 miles an hour if you're down low, flying low and slow. So let's look at this if we were starting the maneuver out from say 60 miles an hour, a much more realistic airspeed for flying low, looking for something down on the ground, or just flying and having a fun day and you happen to notice something down on the ground. So we're flying a little bit slower here, closer to about the 60 mile an hour mark, gives us a lot less room for air and that sets on a lot more quickly, a lot more subtly. We see something on our left, we go ahead and we turn to look for it. We use that little bit of left rudder instinctively even though we shouldn't be. The wing's covering up my moose, so I use a little bit of right aileron, and I'm trying to pull, I'm trying to circle it, and we just keep circling. It might might not be instantaneous, right? This might be after you make two or three circles around the point you're trying to see. I'm trying to see it there, I'm trying to see it there. I'm looking, and yeah, hey, do you have that camera? Can I have to get a picture of this? There's a dolphin right there. Do you see that dolphin? <laughs> and before you know it, the airplane's rolling over on you and setting up for an incipient spin. So we use pair, as always, right? Power to idle, aileron's neutral, opposite rudder, an elevator to briskly break the stall. Now in that particular example there, I probably didn't use pair exactly, and that's because pair is a guideline, it is a great starting point to go power to idle, ailerons neutral, rudder right opposite direction of rotation, the spin, elevator briskly forward, but I wasn't really in a developed spin there. I was getting towards the incipient phase. I was stalling the airplane, the left wing was dropping, and it could very easily happen to the right as well, especially to the right because there's stuff in the way. I got a passenger in the way right here. Well, I like my passenger, but she's kind of in the way. I can't really see the dolphin or the moose or the alligator or whatever I'm trying to see. And so I'm trying to see it. I'm trying to see it. I'm looking over the door. I'm looking for it. I'm pulling back, trying to make that turn. I don't want to cover it up with the wing, so I use a little bit of right rudder, a little bit of left aileron. And as I'm pulling, there's a little bit of a buffet. There's a little bit of a break. And we could easily roll off into a spin to the right here. Now, this airplane's so forgiving, and Cessnas can be so benign, especially these old Cessnas 140s that it's really hard to make them uh, spin, especially spin to the right. But very easy to get into that situation where you could very quickly lose a lot of altitude. And just as we've been talking here, we've lost a little bit of over a thousand feet since we first started talking about moose on the ground and things that makes airplanes crash. <laughs> now you may not really buy into this whole theory. You may think, John, this is silly. I would never do something like that. I don't really fly low and slow or you know, I would never make such a knee-jerk reaction to whip the airplane around when I am low to the ground in a lower energy state. I know better than that. Well, sure you do. 99% of the time, I buy that. You probably do. But it only takes the one time to end really badly. And it's ended badly for a number of guys. There's a reason we call it moose stalls. Like, it has a whole colloquialism, or however you say that fancy word, word of the day. Colloquialism. Can you say that, Steph? <laughs> colloquialism. Call, call, a metal, metal, well, <laughs> yep, that one. Uh, say again, please. But... There is a method to the madness here. There is a reason for the stereotype. There is a reason for the saying. It's just very easy to have a knee-jerk reaction when you're at 50 feet or 500 feet or even 1,000 feet, fairly low to the ground, to see something, whip past it at 90 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, and whip the airplane around 
in a relatively, you know, cruise power setting, relatively low energy state as you make that turn, you try to keep that in sight. And again, note that this might not be on the first half of the turn or the, you know, after a full 360. This might be after you've been making several turns, you've been getting slower and slower and slower and not really realizing it and not understanding that you are in a cross controlled state, bleeding off airspeed, getting slower and slower. Now, we're in a very forgiving airplane because I wouldn't really want to try this in an unforgiving airplane. But I see my dolphin down there. I'm looking for it. I'm going to go ahead and get my cell phone out and snap a picture here because, I mean, come on, that's what we do as pilots, right? We like to take pictures and Instagram, come on, IG, at Flight Mike Alpa, right? Let's go ahead and get a picture of that. And before you know it, things are going to go wrong probably really quickly here. There's the buffet. And look at that. There's the incipient spin. And so we're going to have to go ahead and push forward, get that right rudder in there, get a little bit of aileron in, pick up the nose, pick up the airplane, add full power, get away from the ground. Holy crap. Yes, just drop your phone. That's the best thing you can do in that case. Don't try to hold on the phone and get the picture still, guys. So what happened there, if you're watching on our other cam, is not exactly pair, not exactly proper spin recovery. Why is that? Well, it's twofold, right? Pair means power to idle, aileron's neutral, rudder opposite direction rotation. So if we're spinning to the left, I'm going to go ahead and use right rudder. And then elevator briskly push forward so we can break the stall and get both wings flying again. And then it becomes a normal airplane. We can use the rudder and ailerons and elevator and everything as we would normally recover from the resulting dive, get away from the ground. Now, the reality of the situation here is when this happens to you, you're going to be hopefully not low altitude, but probably you're going to burn up some altitude coming down and there may not be time to go pair power to idle, ailerons neutral, rider, blah, 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 blah. It's gotta be a knee jerk instant reaction and you have to do whatever it takes and you have to be feeling the airplane. If you don't have airplane feel, uh, I would recommend you know flying very high with an instructor in a nice safe environment, not doing anything that could result in something like this. You need to have feel of your aircraft and let it talk to you. And it tells me basically how much rudder authority do I have? How much aileron authority do I have? How much pitch authority do I have? How much lift do I have on the wings? What is my angle of attack? What kind of buffeting is going on? What is my throttle doing? So did I really need to get the power to idle there? No, I was low altitude. I don't have time to reach over and rip the throttle back. My hand should already be there, but my hand was on my cell phone taking a picture. And guess what? That's reality. It shouldn't happen, but it does. So we should at least acknowledge that it happens and come up with a way to sort of remedy it so that we can bury a few less of our friends each year. Now, power to idle, ailerons neutral, rudder, opposite direction rotation, elevator briskly push forward works on most of the airplanes out there. Some airplanes will have a specific spin procedure in that POH that you'll want to review and accomplish or, you know, of course, comply with that. But the point is, I'm not saying don't do pair, but do what it takes to keep the airplane from crashing. If it just takes actually a little bit of aileron, a little bit of rudder, a little bit of elevator forward all at the same time and leaving the power alone, if that works, that's fine. How do you know if it works? Well, you come up here to three, four, five thousand 5,000 feet, especially with an instructor, and you figure out what works. You figure out what the airplane can do when you're hanging on that last little bit, and you find the limit, and then you stay well away from that limit in all phases of flight, no matter what. So that's how mooses crash airplanes. Mooses, is that a word? Moose is the uh, plural of moose. That's why I brought my language <laughs> arts instructor along with me. Uh, thank you. Either way, guys, you know what to do. If you got any questions on this, leave it in the comments below. Please, please, please. The spin course on Fly Mike Alpha is totally free. Go to flyatmikealpha.com. Take the online spin course. It'll take about 45 minutes of your time. Lots of really helpful information in there. Could save your life. Share it with your friends. Could save someone else's life. This is stuff that we really need to know about as pilots. Of the few times I've been in spins or incipient spins as an instructor, when students have caught me off guard completely, uh, nothing happened. I didn't have time to think about anything. I never thought about what I was doing, and I put inputs into the airplane that solved the situation because obviously I'm still here. But I put inputs in, and I had no clue what I was doing. It happened so quickly and so fast, my feet and my hands were doing things that my brain simply couldn't keep up with. If you're not going up and practicing this at least every few months and really getting proficient with it at least some points in your flying career, when it happens to you, it may not be the best day. So other than that, guys, you know what to do. Like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. We will see you guys in the next episode. Check out flyatmikealf.com. Guaranteed to pass your check ride. Private instrument commercial pilot check ride. Check it out. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> okay, we're done.